Today, inshallah, Azza wa Jal, we finish off with the last two actions that we're going to mention that bring a higher place and a vote for the person in paradise. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man thabara ala thnatay ashuta rak'ata min al-sunnati bin allahu lahu baytan fil jannah arba rak'at qabl al-dhur wa rak'atayn ba'daha وركعتين بعد المغرب وركعتين بعد العشاء وركعتين قبل الفجر. This is a hadith many of us alhamdulillah have heard it many times before, but still unfortunately lack to implement it properly. The Prophet ﷺ said, "Whoever is consistent upon twelve rak'at of sunnah in involuntary prayers a day, Allah Azza wa Jalla builds for him a house in paradise." Those twelve rak'at are four before dhuhr, two after dhuhr. Four, uh, two after Maghrib, two after Aisha, and two before Fajr. Firstly, regarding the hadith, man thabara, whoever is consistent upon. If a person prays them as a one-off, then they shouldn't expect this reward. But if a person is consistent, even if there are certain occasions where, for whatever reason, they weren't able to do it. They were extremely busy, they were traveling, they were sick, whatever it may be, inshallah, these times are overlooked. But it is their norm that they pray, to pray these 12 rakats of sunnah a day. This person will have this reward, inshallah. This is something, again, as we mentioned, that a person, even though he knows and he has heard it so many times before, except that many people, they lack in it and they don't have a good reason to do so. If you were to add the sunnah prayers all up, all of them, these 12 sunnah prayers all up, how much extra would you be praying a day? In terms of minutes, 20 minutes. Not even, yani, yani, 20 minutes to Barakallah is, is good to Barakallah. Seven, seven, seven minutes, minutes yeah. <laughs> probably closer to seven minutes. Jayid, yani, you're not missing out much. You're not missing out much of your day. It's not taking actually that much energy. Even if worst case scenario, you had to pray quickly. No, you should pray quickly as a worst case scenario. But try your best to make it your norm that you pray to these 12 rakat extra a day. Most people, again, they do not give enough attention to their obligatory prayers, so they have a problem with this. Remember last week we said a lot of people, they, when they want to be religious, etc., they think about the extra things to do, and they don't perfect that which is an obligation. When you perfect the obligation, it becomes natural that you want to pray more. Most people with their obligatory prayer, they lack in khushu'ah. One of the main reasons they lack in khushu'ah is because they squeeze their salah in between everything else they do in their life. They don't give themselves time before the salah, and they don't give their time, themselves time after salah. From the etiquette of prayer, for example, is for you to make wudu before you pray, even if you already have wudu. This is part of the etiquette, part of the sunnah acts, that you make wudu again, and you sometimes have prayers before it, or sometimes if you're coming, and praying in the masjid, it's recommended that you come early and wait for prayer. Part of that process of you making wudu before the prayer, and you praying your sunnah before or waiting in the masjid, part of that process is for what? To help you clear your mind, to achieve relaxation and tranquility, so by the time you actually pray your obligatory prayer, you're completely free from outside thoughts, and you can focus on your prayer. And then after the prayer, from the sunnah actions is to do your afkar. So even after, salam alaikum wa salam alaikum wa don't get up straight away and go. No, relax and do your afkar. Part of the process there also is to help you achieve khushu'ah. If you look at the majority of people just with their obligatory prayers, how do they enter the salah? Straight doing whatever they're doing. They're working, they're talking, they're watching, they're playing, they're doing whatever they're doing. They come straight into salah. By the time they say Allahu Akbar, pray the first rak'ah, second rak'ah, third rak'ah, they still haven't stopped fin thinking about what they were just doing. They're still thinking about whatever they were doing. 
And if that comes to an end, they're already thinking in their fourth rak'ah, when maybe some tranquility came, of what they're going to be doing right after salah. So you see them again, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, they're up to barakallah and going straight away. This person again will not be able to achieve khushu'ah in his prayer. So a person needs to take the necessary steps to achieve khushu'ah in their salah, but also take the external steps besides their prayer itself with the other prayers to assist them achieve that. And the one who is perfecting to the best of his ability the obligatory prayers, as we mentioned, it's only natural as a want that he's going to want to pray more. And he's going to be looking for other prayers to pray. Why? Because he loves the salah. As the Prophet ﷺ said, salah. And the pleasure of my eyes, the coolness of my eyes, has been made in the salah. So if the Prophet ﷺ wanted to relax, he wanted enjoyment, he wanted Allah's assistance, whatever it may be, what did he turn to? He turned to the prayer. Inshallah Azza wa Jal, if you want to get to this level and you say it's very hard for me to do 12 rakats straight away, at least start with two rakats that you're consistent upon. Choose one of the Sunnah prayers for you to be consistent upon. If you already do one of these, and there are a lot of people that already pray the Sunnah for Fajr, they pray Sunnah for Fajr and then they pray Fajr, but they don't pray anything else. Then choose another prayer. Choose another one of the Sunnah prayers and do that and be consistent upon that. And then you continually build this up every few weeks, yet another prayer, until you know, in a very short few months, inshallah Azza wa Jal, you're praying your 12 Sunnah prayers regularly. Regularly. And work your life, brothers and sisters, around the Salah. Work your life around the Salah. You find most of us, even on days where we have nothing on, we won't pray our prayers properly. Because we just organize our entire day. What we want to do, and then we, when we get the chance, squeeze Salah into it. Don't be like that. No, say for example, khalas, at what, if you have work, 1.30 to 1.45, this is the time I'm going to pray. That's plenty of time for you to pray your Sunnah prayers, pray your Fard prayer, and go back to work. Feed that 15 minutes. Same thing if you're a sister, even if you're at home, organize your time as such. Okay, this time to this time, I'm going to not do anything. No housework, no cooking. I'm going to make sure I've done whatever I need to do before or after that. But this specific time, I'm going to keep free from my salah. This is if you're struggling. So you can focus on this. One of the things that many people from all of these salawat, one of the prayers that they struggle the most with is for Dhuhr. Even because they're at work, and as we mentioned, by you putting that time, you'll be able, inshallah, Azza wa Jal, and easily pray your prayers consistently. And again, if there is a circumstance where you cannot, no issue, inshallah, it's overlooked, when this is your norm. Or if you're at home, again, you get busy, caught up with everything else, or for some people it's their nap time. And they get very tired. Again, this will only take a few more minutes out of your day, and you get this great reward. We go to work for 20, 30 years plus to pay off a house loan. Now we work eight, nine hours a day, five days a week, in order for us at the end of it to, have, to own a house in this dunya. And many of us, we don't even get that opportunity. And you will die renting or a housing commission. Jayid, with Allah Azza wa Jal, you get this 12 rakats a day, a few minutes a day, and you're consistent upon it, and at the end of it, you can get, inshallah Azza wa Jal, a house in the paradise built by Allah Azza wa Jal that requires no maintenance, and you don't have to pay any bills like we have to pay in this dunya where a person is now scared to turn on their condition one time. Tayyip. Regarding some of the fiqh rulings and the 12 daily prayers, number one, the sunnah for fajr is sunnah, it's not an obligation. The sunnah for fajr is a sunnah, not an obligation. Sometimes you see people, there's a particular madhab, they come even if the salat al fajr is going on and they come into the masjid and they haven't prayed fajr yet, they haven't prayed the sunnah for fajr, they'll stand on the side and they'll pray. This is wrong. This is completely wrong. If you come and there's any obligatory prayer coming, and there's any obligatory prayer on, you come in and you join the jama'ah straight away. Doesn't matter what, salah from the sunnah you've missed. You join the prayer straight away. 
If you want to pray your sunnah, you can pray after. You missed it for a valid reason, you can make up your sunnah prayers if you missed it for a valid reason, not because you were lazy. For example, you came, you thought you were going to be able to pray in the masjid, you didn't have time, the karma went off, or they were already in salah. After the prayer, you can pray your sunnah prayers, either after your uh, salat al fajr or after at duha time. You can delay it until then. Okay, because it's a, you need this like time to pray. The prayers when you are traveling or you are sick and you are not able to pray, you do not pray your sunnah prayers. First, if you're traveling. If you're traveling, you do not pray your sunnah prayers. If you're traveling, you do not pray your sunnah prayers except for Salat al-Fajr, the two rakat before Salat al-Fajr and Salat al-Witr. The other prayers, you don't pray sunnah for. Now, you either shorten or you shorten and you join. And you don't pray the sunnah prayers. If you want to pray extra, that's up to you, no issue. But there's no sunnah prayers when you are traveling that are awaited like these ones. If you pray sitting down, a person is allowed to pray sitting down when it comes to the sunnah prayers. But he only, even if he has no excuse, but he gets half the reward. One very common mistake that people make. What are you allowed to do in your sunnah prayers that you're not allowed to do in your fard prayers? We just said it. Sitting down. Sit down, good. What about sujood? We can do sujood with, uh, in, without, in sunnah prayer. No, you, gotta, you gotta do sujood. Mm. You have to do sujood unless you cannot. Yeah. It's a very common mistake. You, the only people that are excused from sujood are people that physically cannot do it. So let's say he's a very old man and he struggles to get there. Not you are old man, I'm just saying. <laughs> usually they sit on this side of the room. <laughs> let's say they are very old men and they are sitting on chairs and they can't go because of back problems or knee problems or joint problems. They can't do sujood. Okay, then they go down lower than they go if they were doing rukur. No problem. But if a person is able but they just want to sit down for whatever reason and pray, either on a chair or on the floor. They are sitting down where they would normally be standing up. But when it comes to sujood, they have to still do sujood. They have to still do sujood. Jayid, if a person... Oh, this is another one. Okay. But you only get half the reward. Tayyip, if a person prays sitting down, does he get the reward for praying the 12 rakat a day? If a person prays sitting down, does he get the reward for praising, praying the 12 rakat a day? Yeah. The problem is he gets half the reward. And so some of the halawat, they said, no, he doesn't get the complete reward. <laughs> this is talking about the complete reward, which is the 12 proper rakat. So when he's praying sitting down, you don't even get that. Sorry, <laughs> you missed out on that. <laughs> You get a lot of hasanah, <laughs> you get a lot of reward, but you don't get the full house. Wallahu alam. If a person is sick and he cannot pray the sunnah prayers, Allah rewards him as if he is praying his sunnah prayers. And this is from the blessings of being consistent in actions. That if you were to travel or you were sick and you weren't able to do it, Allah rewards you as if you were doing it. So the person, for example, who Prays Aisha in the masjid every day, that's his norm. One day he got sick, he couldn't pray in the masjid. He get, and he had to pray at home, in his bed. Allah rewards him as if he prayed in the masjid. Or a person was traveling, and obviously he's traveling, he's less likely to pray in Jama'ah, etc. Allah rewards him as if he prayed in Jama'ah. Why? Because that was his norm. And this is from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as came in the hadith. From among some of the fiqh rulings that uh, with the sunnah prayers, when can you make up? As we mentioned, there's different, there's all difference of opinion regarding when can you make up a sunnah prayer in general. If you make up in the time after leaving it for a valid reason, no issue, inshallah. In general, again, there's difference of opinion. So, you didn't pray Salat al Fajr before the sunnah for Salat al Fajr before Fajr because you came to the masjid and they were already praying. In this case, no issue. You had a reason that you missed it, pray it after. Or you came to the masjid for Dhuhr, and at the time of Dhuhr, 
they were already praying by the time you got here. But as you're praying, they made their karma, and so you left to come pray. You can make it up after the Jumana issue. But if a person left her for no reason, he was at work and khalas. He didn't want to pray, he was tired, whatever. So he only prayed door. When he gets home, at Maghrib time, he can't make up his sunnah first. He left it for no reason. It was not a valid reason. Regarding Salat al Jumu'ah, there is no sunnah prayers for Salat al Jumu'ah. The 12 prayers are for Salat al for Salat al the 12 sunnah prayers. For the one that is the right for Salat al Dhuhr does not apply to Salat al Jumu'ah. What is sunnah at Salat al Jumu'ah time? You come to the masjid, you pray Tahiyat al Masjid. Not sunnah before Tahiyat al Masjid. You can pray as much as you want. You want to pray two, four, six, eight, it's up to you. No issue. Pray as much as you want, but there isn't a sunnah ratiba for Jumu'ah. Because Jumu'ah is not dhuhr. After Salat al Jumu'ah, there's different narrations. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he says, if you're praying in the masjid, you pray four rak'at after Jumu'ah. And if you pray at home, then you pray two rak'at. The regarding the Sunnah prayers, take it as a rule, all your Nafal prayers are two by two. All of your Nafal prayers, <coughs> your Sunnah prayers, etc., all of them are two by two, except Salat al Witr, which is an odd number. It can be either joined or split up two by two by two, and then one odd one at the end. Anything else from the Sunnah prayers? Sunnah prayers from the fifth rulings is you can pray in Jama'ah. You can pray Sunnah prayers in Jama'ah. Don't make it a norm, but if two people wanted to pray it together, no issue. A person praying Sunnah can pray behind someone praying Fard, and a person praying Fard can pray behind someone praying Sunnah. Again, there's a difference of opinion, but the stronger Allah Alam is that people with different intentions are allowed to pray behind each other, no issue. Any other? Just on that one, so if you're saying if you come for the Lord, and it's you and your... You're one of them, hold that thought. If you're praying a nafal prayer, whether it's a sunnah prayer or you're praying tahiyat al-masjid or any other nafal prayer, and the iqama happens, when do you leave your prayer and how do you leave your prayer? If you're very close to finishing, then finish your, finish your prayer. Even if you have to pray quicker. Let's say you're in your last rakah, you pray very quickly, okay, and then you join the issue. But if you're at the beginning of your prayer or it's going to take you long to finish, then no. Leave your prayer and join the jama'ah and make it up after. How do you leave your prayer? Salaam alaykum wa rahmatullah, salaam alaykum wa rahmatullah. No issue. Jayeed. And then you uh, join the jama'ah. After the jama'ah, you go and you make it up, inshallah. When you say, Shaykh, you leave your prayer, I'll leave that to the question at the end, inshallah. No, ask question about the sunnah prayers. Yeah. Yusuf first, Yusuf first. Oh. <coughs> you just said you could pray what to do. So you don't Because the next one is simple. If it's uh, same me and my we are praying to Sunnah. He's got a name. Khairuddin. <laughs> Khairuddin. You know why? Because I don't want anyone to pick on the Asian guy. <laughs> and so many brothers, they come and they don't know the Asian guy. They just say the Asian brother. And they all think he's Indonesian. <laughs> now I'm the Singaporean Khairuddin. <laughs> my brother, so if you're praying by Khairuddin. We know where that comes from. Yeah, so me and Sheikh Yarkh, Sheikh Khairuddin. So if we come here and he's praying Sunnah, I can join his Sunnah prayers already. Yeah. But you can't do that, make it a habit. Yeah, you know, you don't make it a habit every single time you guys pray Sunnah together because then it becomes an innovation. But, but you know, just randomly, two brothers that wanted to pray together, one of them wanted to practice his Quran, he wanted to practice his Imamah, whatever it is, do innovation. They add, do they add more than one? Allahumma. In regards to Taslim, if you're praying, and I can just break it. Just that the steam right? You can. But There's a difference of opinion. Do you break it just with your intention that you're leaving the prayer or do you give the steam? Either yeah. or, both are different ways. Uh, some of the ulama said your prayer is broken automatically, but no, still give the steam. So that's what I had in masjid or the normal any, any level. Any level. Any level. Just get up and, and pray. And just to, to ask it just in regards to the chair. Is there a difference if, like, if you want to the actual number of shoes? Any old sunnah prayers are. When he's speaking about Sunnah prison. Wait, but just the, the, is there a better thing if you can pray on the floor to like just sit on your knees? Is that more better to do than to sit in a chair? Or no. it doesn't matter or it doesn't 
الله أكبر سير نقرأ سير نقرأ فبس نسير نقرأ العرب إيش ولا بس إيش ولا إيش طالب أسد السجود يستجد الله أكبر and the Prophet ﷺ's reports have been, you should see on the floor, but this was the norm with them, that they would sit and sleep on the floor, yeah. in chairs and things like that, they were the norm, especially in the masjid. Shaykh Masih, I'm going to tell you, for example, if you say, do you think it's a good thing? No, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Any other questions regarding the Sunnah Prayer, Shaykh? If the khutbah has already started, do you still pray tahiyat al masjid or no? Good question, yes. When you, for Jum'ah, when you come in, even if the khutbah has already started, you pray tahiyat al masjid. Can you pray that al masjid when the adhan is being called or you need to wait for adhan to finish? It's not a matter of can you or can't you, but what's better, Allah Alam? Repeat after that then, because that's a particular ibadah, and then pray tahiyat al masjid. Really? Yeah. Allah Allah. Do you have khutbah, Shaykh? He's gonna order you to sit down. Okay, I know, I know it's optional, but before he's gonna talk to you. No. So and, and it happens one here in uh, Australia. One of my friends he came salat al Jum'ah and sit straight away because the Sheikh was on the member. Then the Sheikh talked to him. He said, "Get up, <laughs> get up." And, <laughs> yeah. right, so he was confused. ممكن ممكن المذهب المالكي لا أدري. إيه ممكن ممكن المذهب المالكي هكذا لكن في حديث وارد عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم صحيح. إنه رجل جلس فأمر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أن يقوم ويصلى ركعتين ويسرع فيه هنا لا يفوت صحيح صحيح المسألة الأولى الله يحييك مجموعة كبيرة أو عدد كبير من الخطباء يكون عنده أمر في الجلوس إذا كان فيه تخطر للطابق هذا طابق محكمة نعم هذا ثابت يعني نعم سام سام أو الخطباء إذا يسأل أحد يقول له Cause issues like uh, when it comes in and he's gonna like step over everyone, they tell him, I mean, sit down, <laughs> stop annoying people, sit down. Some of you know, some of the khutabat may say that, not in the fiqh masala of that one, but because of the harming others. So, to stop harming people, in, in, um, in, in that regard, it's not that you're it's more than okay, the fun road, stay in the sunnah prayers, okay, but the fun road in the prayers, it's always to get the, the, the best of fun road. Like you said, you people on the way. Yeah, you said, uh, well, sure. see with their space. The, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told someone off because of this. Really? Yeah, there's a hadith about it because you're harming the people. You're harming the people. You see some people, he comes, yeah, he, the khutbah starts at 1 o'clock, he wants to come at 1.13, and he wants to show a bunch everyone as if he's playing for the Bulldogs of Omar and to come sit here. <laughs> and when he sits, he's looking at you with complete khushu. <laughs> everyone, you see, everyone eyeing him out and making dua against him, and he comes and he's got so much kushu in his listening. Regarding the, the, regarding the Sunnah prayers, the Nafil prayers, there's a lot of different ones. There's a lot of different prayers that a person can pray besides the yani 12 that are reported Sunnah Aday. Yalla, start. What are they? Hands up. Bismillah. Salat al Hands up. Salat al Salat al Salat al which one? The eight. Or the end of the night. Allah's Qiyam al in general. Tahiyat al-Masjid. Tahiyat al-Masjid. Tahajjud. Tahajjud, which is when? The last third of the night. How do you work at the last third of the night? You have to wait the time from Maghrib to Fajr. What time is that now? How do you do it, sir? You work out from Maghrib until Fajr time. How many hours is that? Divided by three. I didn't know that. I thought it was between Isha and Fajr. No. Maghrib to Isha. Maghrib to Isha. And then you divide it by three. And that last third. Ten hours divided by three. Yeah. Okay. So just before Fajr. Yeah. For the ones that Allah Mabarik, they pray long, they have to worry about the last when the last third starts. For the ones Allah Mabarik, but Wallah, it's still very good. Wallah. Wallah, it's still amazing. Even if it's ten, five minutes before Fajr. Okay? They have other, other Nafal prayers that are basically praying the day. So that is the This is a type of prayer, but we're talking about the daily ones. Unless you want to get married every day. Salatul Jihad. Salatul Jihad.
After oldu. Ah, Türk adı after oldu. <gülüyor> Türk adı after oldu. Yalla var olsun. Before Asa. Put your hand up. Did you mention, mention methods? No. Otherwise, well, football had a bad social. What year did you finish? Say, the four rakat before Asa. Four rakat before Asa. Okay, again, two by two. This is Nafal prayer. It's not from the 12 that our Prophet system used to do every single day, but it's there. Ahmed, here the end up. Ah, uh, Salat al Mayd. It's things to do every single day. Sadr al Janaza, things to do every single day. Four before Isha. Four before Isha. Yes. I've seen this. Before. You've seen people praying for you? You've heard that it's right. I have to check that one. Allah Ma'alim. Uh, in, in Ahnaf, I've seen the prayer for before Isha. Okay, I'll, just, I'll go to double check that one. Yeah. Um, after Adhan. After Adhan. I was waiting for that one. What's that one? Just after Adhan. Anything seen else? That uh, you, sir. Alhamdulillah. See, when you come, you learn. <laughs> That's why when, when in Adhan is finished, you'll see a lot of people stand up and pray for Ramadan. Not here, not here. Here, after Adhan, we talk. Can you share, explain why there is no um, Salat Sunnah between Asr and Maghrib? Ba'd al-Asr? This is a waqt qarah. This is a makroo time to pray. Because when, when you say it for the like, young guys, it will be their, their mind. But it's sometimes they forget. No, yeah, after, after Salat al-Asr, there, there's times where you shouldn't pray. We'll get into that when we do the fiqhs, inshallah. Specific times. Uh, there's something that you guys have missed out. What was that? There was one that was in my mind. So what was we talking about? Oh yes, there's a very common, there's a very good one, which a lot of people miss out. Khusuf? Yawmiyyah, salawat yawmiyyah. No, I'm a Walid said that. And we said it before. It's after one of the first prayers. After Zahar, two by two? After no, that's, that's for me. Zahar, two by two after my yeah. There's two and then and the two after my Zahar, after my Zahar. After my Zahar, after my Zahar. After the Zahar. Yes. After the Zahar, yeah. Yeah, so after the Zahar. That's why you always put Zahar. No. no. The Prophet said, said, whoever prays four before Zahar, and four after Zahar, the whole fire will be haram for him. Or his flesh will be haram in the offering. The four, so one go or two by two? Two by two, all, all of it two by two. Said two, by two. Okay, so you've got here your six at all time. Four before and two after. Yes, and then you add another two after. Okay? And that is, is part of the particular virtue. Okay? So that's, okay? that's not the four before us. La, no, no, no. no. You know, some, there's different of opinion. Uh, is that allowed or not allowed? But the safest is to stick to all of them two by two. Qiyam al night time, 100% two by two. As the Prophet said, the night prayers are two by two. But during the day, there's different of opinion. But stick to the safer, which is uh, two by two. Even though there's different of opinion. Tayyib. These are some of the prayers that you do, as we mentioned, yani every single day, the different types of Nafil prayers. Obviously, throughout yani, the year, you have different prayers like Salat al-Janazah, which is Farad Kifaya. People have to pray it. Okay, but if there's enough people for you to join it, it's, it's optional. Salat al-Kusuf al-Kusuf, the Eclipse prayers, the Salat al-Istisqa, if there's uh, rain, there's, so there's drought. Okay, there's a lot of different types of prayers to pray. And when there's a lot of it, this is a sign of how important it is with Allah Azza wa Jal. And how great it is with Allah Azza wa Jal that Allah has placed so many types for a person to pray and to benefit from. Jayid, but it's very, you know, it's upon us to learn them, to learn their rulings, and to do our best to, you know, be consistent upon them. Jayid, be, try and be consistent upon them. The final act of worship, which brings about a higher bird, which we'll mention in paradise, is visiting the, the sick. Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ عَادَ مَرِيدًا أُخْزَرَ أَخَلْ لَهُ فِي اللَّهِ Prophet said, whoever visits his brother who is sick 
for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, a caller calls out, yani an angel calls out, um, yani may you be happy and blessed, and may your steps be blessed, and may you go into the higher abodes of the paradise. This is a great act of worship which unfortunately is extremely neglected. The visiting of the sick, the visiting of those that yani, are in need of that assistance. As you know, a person when he's sick, generally speaking, he is bedridden or he's stuck at home. And when a person's stuck at home, it's not his norm. And so even he may have some physical ailments, but the emotional and the mental ones can make it worse. A person, you know, have some, you know, if he's vomiting or he's you know, got some illness or he has to take some medicine or he's done an operation, this person's at home. That's, that's usually the easy part. But a person is used to every day going out and being out and seeing their brothers, etc. Sometimes it's the emotional uh, toll or the mental toll that it has on him being inside four walls all day that has a big problem on him. You see a person, even if he's not sick, <coughs> but he's like work, he works full time, he wakes up in the morning, gets ready, goes to work, comes back home tired in the evening. When he has uh, like um, he has a ho holiday, he has a break from work. If he's staying at home, let's say for one week, the first day it's mad, second day it's mad, third day he starts to feel something's not right. Why am I at home? Am I like a woman? Am I? <laughs> and I get fired. Am I sick? Why am I at home? Like his body doesn't accept that change. Okay, and he needs to get out of the house. He's not a gardener, he starts gardening. He doesn't exercise, he starts walking, does anything just to be out of the house. Because it's not normal for him. So when a person is forced to be at home and he's not around his work, he's not around his brothers, he's, you know, the life is not in the normal cycle, this can have a big effect on that person. So when people go and visit that person, this can really you know, raise up his happiness, it can really raise up in his spirits, and it assists him. It assists him, and anyone who's been in that situation, he knows the feeling. Anyone that felt was stuck at home, you know, or stuck at hospital, and people visited them, uh, it changed. It changed how they were feeling, and it made them feel better, and they were more positive, and they were more encouraged, etc. And this is something that we should have as brothers, and this is why Islam came and encouraged so many community activities. In every single day, people, for example, to come pray in Jama'ah. Well, because there's, some, there's brotherhood there. There's unity there. When someone doesn't come, it's very easy to ask about them. I mean, this person, he used to pray with us every day. Where is he now? We don't see him. And so you ask about him. Allahu Akbar, he's done an operation. Allahu Akbar, he's sick. So people can call and message, etc. But when people lock themselves away, they are going against what the community wants, what Allah wants from the community. They are going against what is the norm, Islamically, and that's how you're part of this community. There are some brothers, six months, eight months, nine months, you don't hear about them. Then they get, into sick, they get sick or they do an operation or something happens to them, and then they complain. You never asked about me and no one from the masjid came and none of the brothers visited me. How are we meant to know about your issue? Six months, people got sick, you never visited. Nine months, people died, you never came prayed on them. But you locked yourself away from the community. Islam is a communal religion. And it encourages when people are healthy, for people to be together. Brotherhood, visits, Eid, marriage, etc, etc, etc. And when people are part of that community, it's easy to assist them, including the times when they get sick. So just as it's very important, for people, if someone is sick or in need to go and assist them, it is very important that when people do not have an excuse for them to be active as part of that community. And it's a two-way street. We don't want to be any people who they're the line. There's you know they're spoiled and they're selfish. They're away from everyone, and then when they get sick after three years of being any you know, missing. No one knows. I think Guantanamo Bay, are they in Allah Alam where they are? Then they get sick, no one visited me and they're upset with the community. No. Both ways. Jade, but this is a great reward and this is a great act of worship and this is something that brings the community together. And while there are some brothers of Allah Mabarik, they, they're very good at this. Someone gets sick or someone's in need, the better they're the first ones there. And all this is amazing. And inshallah we hope that these people have a special reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
هذا والله اعلم وصلى الله محمد وعلى اله وصحبه